Hey, my name is Kaylee Farmer. I'm 26 years old from Durham, North Carolina, currently living in Nashville, Tennessee. What makes me unique is you don't see people walking around every day looking like me. I'm 5 foot 10, I'm athletic, and I don't I look too weird and crazy. I'm very well put together. I can talk <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I call this fashion about to get a spray tan. Yes, I am available. And I know I'm simply irresistible. So, holla if you're interested. I've lived a crazy life. I've done things that not very many people have done. I've lived all over the country, from California to Texas, back in North Carolina. I've hit all areas, and I've tried lots of different things. I think I've tried so many different things just because, honestly, I've been pretty good at everything I've tried so I'm always looking for the next challenge the next adventure I'm always just looking for more I really hate getting comfortable usually as soon as I move or go on to the next thing it's because I've gotten comfortable in something else I grew up playing sports because as soon as, I was, as soon as I was born my brother he's three years older than me he was always playing sports and I wanted to be like him I wanted to hang out with him and his friends I would knock on the door try to come in there and hang out and I figured one way that I could bond with my brother was by playing sports as well. And so, although it's not something that my dad necessarily pushed on me, it was definitely something that was important to our family. So I grew up, I played everything. I did ballet, gymnastics, soccer, which I learned quickly was a no-go for me because I hate running. Uh, the goalie, goalie was a good spot. I would sit there and pick grass. I swam. I, in high school, I swam, played volleyball and played softball, so I had a sport for every single season. Sports was something that just kept me motivated, kind of kept me structured and in line, although, you know, I made my mistakes and I did my crazy things. Sports definitely kept me on the right track. Student Athlete of the Week. That honor goes to Northern Durham softballer supreme Kaylee Farmer, who's got a slugging percentage so high it'd make Albert Pujols blush. Kareth Burke has the details. Kaylee Farmer is known for her hot bat. She has Northern Durham's single season record for home runs. That's one of eight school records she owns as a junior. Kaylee put the work in to make sure she's dangerous at the plate. Hitting, you're always going to have to work on. Always going to have to work on. I think I had a natural arm. I was kind of born with big shoulders like my dad. <laughs> Kaylee has scholarship offers rolling in because she has her bases covered in the classroom too. She takes AP courses and maintains a 4-2 GPA. Her devotion to softball and homework taught her the meaning of sacrifice. I mean, I have good friends that I can look to, but hanging out on the weekends, rare. And to get this, she wants to go into sports broadcasting when she gets uh -oh, older. She can't have my job quite yet. <laughs> Better look up. I played Division I softball in college at Campbell University, which is in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. Probably never heard about it. It's in the middle of nowhere, so I'll tell people it's close to Raleigh because most people have heard of Raleigh. And it was a dry campus. Couldn't get into much trouble there. So I really liked my college experience, actually. It kind of made me into the um, grandma that I am today. <laughs> So I started playing in the LFL because actually when I lived in Texas, my friend Big Black, who has passed away recently, he told me, he said, he used to call me KK, KK, you would be perfect for the LFL. Like, you're hot, you're athletic, you, you would love it. The only thing is you have to really love it because they don't pay you, they don't do anything. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I can't. I don't want to do that. Like, I need to make some money here. So it was something that's kind of put on the back burner of my mind. So... When I took a little bit of a break from wrestling, I, th I thought about it one day and his words came to my head, KK, you'll be great for the LFL. So I googled uh, when the next tryouts were and Atlanta was the closest team to Florida when I was actually living in Florida. So I drove down there seven hours to the tryout, made the team, and from there I drove seven hours every single weekend to get my ass beat at practice. I broke my hand like the third practice and would drive back just sore as hell driving in my car thinking, why the fuck am I doing this? <laughs> And it was just for a bigger purpose. I knew one, it was going to help my wrestling career. And like I said before, I just wanted a challenge. I, I had never, you know, football wasn't something that we could play in school. So the fact that now football was available to girls, I wanted to try and do it. Tonight's defensive game plan is to shut down Jolie Afezakai. And that comes down to Purnell and Franklin shutting her down. Now there's a rookie they love in Atlanta, Kaylee Farmer, coming up unblocked. 
And that was a loss of a yard. Great tackle by Farmer. Dane Robinson, the head coach of Atlanta, could not say enough about Kaylee Farmer. He said, watch out. She is a budding superstar. My family is so important to me because they're just the best. Here backstage, show's over. And look who's here. It's my, it's my mom and dad. Did you enjoy the show? Yes, sir. Awesome. Love it. What was your favorite part? Camille coming See, out. That? Holding the 10 pounds of gold. That is Woo! That's a good choice. There you have it. Anything you want to say to the camera? So long. Drive safe. Good, good. <laughs> So a part of me almost wishes I had that story like oh man I grew up I grew up and my family didn't support me and they, but, but I, I don't have that my family is great my family has always supported me in everything that I've done I, the, the hardest struggle we had was money growing up so that's another reason for me to succeed because I want to be able to take care of my parents I want to make sure they're good they shouldn't have to worry about anything for the rest of their lives like they raised me the the best anyone possibly could and they've stuck by me and let me kind of go out and chase my dreams and although my mom will call and worry the hell out of me because she's <laughs> she's worried about her little girl which is understandable they've still supported me even the times in life where I've struggled and I had to move back home and for a little bit my room was always my room my hometown is Durham Durham North Carolina and I'm super proud of that and I'm, that's always gonna be my home because it's my home base it's where I go back to regroup to figure things out and I know that I have the love and support from my family there I love, 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 love kids. Anybody that knows me, if we're out to eat and all of a sudden you see me start like making faces, they'll automatically be like, Kaylee's our kid over there. <laughs> there's something about a child and their innocence and they're, they're just good. They're, and I've seen so much bad in the world that children are still good and I started working with them because I want to contain as much good as possible and make sure they bring that as they get older and older and older and they stay good people and they learn life lessons but they don't have to learn it in such a hard way they don't have to go through things that I've gone through to learn those lessons um, and as far as the kids with special needs goes I've always been interested even in college I wanted to do stuff with the Special Olympics to help out because I've been so blessed with all my gifts uh, that just physically that I want to be able to help people that have trouble with that and it kind of grew when I was in Florida. I was working out at a gym where one of the the owner's wife, she worked with kids with special needs, but autism. And so kids on the spectrum, very low functioning autism though. And I didn't, to be honest, I didn't know much about autism. And I said, yeah, but you know, that's something that I could learn about, I could kind of get into. So I had an interview there and I had to do training to be an RBT, which is a registered behavioral therapist. So I did all that training and I started working with these kids and doing their programs and, and learning about unconditional love. And that's what another big takeaway from working with kids with autism, working with people with special needs, you really do learn about forgiveness and unconditional love because they're gonna do things that piss you off. <laughs> I've got pissed on, I've got my hair pulled, I've got punched in the face, I've got scratched. But at the end of the day, you still have to repair with them because, you know, they, they're they learning. And you have to be patient and it taught me so much patience. And there's just so much good that can come out of working with people that aren't as uh, fortunate as you are, that aren't uh, typical per se. And that's something that is very important to me and I want to continue doing for the rest of my life. And I do want to use a platform like this where people know my name. I don't care about people knowing my name to be famous. I care about it so they can they can feel comfortable learning from me, so they can feel comfortable coming to me, and I want to be able to just help people grow and be the best people they can possibly be. What's unique? What do you got to say to them? Mm. Mm, say something to them. You can say... Mm. Key. Key. I come in and the first thing you ask for is what? My back? 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 Oh, are you guys doing piggyback rides yeah. too? Yeah. <laughs> are you done? Are you done? Having a temper tantrum? Because it's raining? And we can't go on the golf cart? 
Let's go down the slide. Ready? Come on. Come on. Ready? One, one, two, three, go! You can do it! You can do it! Yeah! What? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> so my wrestling journey happened because I have a four year degree I was like I'm the first person in my family to go to college I'm gonna use this degree I'm gonna have you know a six figure job and wear a blazer every day and be a professional so my first job out of college I did uh, sales for the Sacramento Kings in California and I realized like yeah wow this real job stuff is not for me <laughs> <laughs> the environment was so formal and just people were just so uh, their energy was just a whole different wavelength than mine I, I feel like I'm very energetic and I'm very a mutual respect type of person I'm not a kiss ass that's something that I'm never gonna do so I was like wow I had to realize the formal kind of professional setting job not for me office no so I was sitting there thinking well, what can I do so I moved on to Texas had a different job, I actually liked it, but ended up getting laid off, the company got bought out. Moved back home, like I said, regrouped. And what happened was, me and my dad, we went to an independent show in the boondocks, the middle of nowhere. It was terrible. It, the ceiling was low, people they were trying to dive off the top rope, hit the ceiling, it was, it was awful. But I, I was loving it, I was having so much fun with my dad. And the next morning I woke up, and it's just like I had this epiphany, I was like, why didn't I think of this before? Like, I was, born and bred to be a professional wrestler. I used to act when I was younger. That's the entertainment part of it. I'm a natural athlete. That's the athletic side of it. And I grew up watching it. I, I was made for this. So I got on the computer and I googled how to become a professional wrestler. And I found some schools and I found the one that I liked the best. Moved down to Florida. Started training at Team 3D Academy in Kissimmee. I stayed in one of those motels for about three weeks until I found a room on Craigslist. And that's my wrestling journey. I was down there, I trained for a year, started working the independents, and now we're here. I like professional wrestling as far as the performance goes, aside from any other sport I've ever played, just because that feeling that you get, it you can't get it anywhere. Like I said, I've acted. That feeling, you still having a live audience, but it's, it's kind of hard to mess up your lines or something like that. Although you're live, you know, you've rehearsed, 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 rehearsed. Wrestling is just kind of so in the moment and things could go wrong at any minute and just the adrenaline that you get from professional wrestling and that live audience cannot be duplicated with anything and they, they said it actually when I first went to school they said you know you're gonna get in the ring and you're gonna either love it or hate it you're gonna get addicted to it or no right away it's not for you and as soon as I had my first bump day I knew it was for me current wrestling role is very unique because Camille is kind of the polar opposite of my natural self. My natural self is goofy as hell, I don't care, I talk shit, I move around like this. First of all, when you come to the golf course, make sure you wear proper attire, like cut off shirts. <laughs> Next, you're gonna put your tee in the ground, like so. Now you're gonna put your ball, preferably a very, very dirty one, onto the tee. Poke your butt out just a bit, like you're on the dance floor. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> gotcha, I call that a pump fake. <laughs> oh yeah! Hey, it's out of play, but it looked cool going in the air. That's all for today. Whereas Camille is stoic, doesn't say much, is always observing. And she's scary as hell. Like, people are so scared of Camille. And once you start talking to Kaylee, you'll realize, oh, okay, there's nothing to be scared of. But I actually like playing that character just because it is a part of me. And there is that, there's that part of me that is very real. But I know because of my, just my stature and my presence that I bring, I know how it intimidates people and I'm not trying to go around all day long for the rest of my life intimidating everybody so you know my, my normal self is laid back and I, I, I feel pretty approachable I can talk to anybody make friends with anybody but Camille is that side of me that is just 
proud and strong and just an independent woman and I love that side of me too so it's been really interesting playing that especially when so many things in life were going wrong at least I had the gym press that I have a full face of makeup on it. <laughs> eyelashes and all you can do full makeup where it's like oh man what a natural beauty but really <laughs> it's not when I went into the gym put on my headphones ask that is when I put on Camille face too just bitch face cuz do you do not approach me in the gym my best friends I'll help them out when they're first time going to the gym but they know like I do not want to work out with anybody it's my me time it's the only time during the day that I'm not on my phone except for music I'm not on my phone looking at anything I'm not having to talk to anybody or worry about anything except for me and building my body and worrying about how I want to shape it what I need to work on it's and I usually I'd say about two hours a day with cardio, with everything. I'm usually in the gym about two hours a day. I wish I could be in there longer, to be honest, because when I'm done with the gym, it's kind of like, now what? Like, <laughs> that's, a, that's the best part of my day. Currently, I'm prepping for a bodybuilding show. I'm going to compete in figure. Can't do bikini. That's way too small for me. I like muscles. I like being a strong woman. So I was like, figure. We'll do that. The reason I got into bodybuilding is because I've done strongman before. I actually won my very first strongman competition that I ever competed in. And that was more of a full body strength type thing, which I'm naturally very good at. I'm just, I call myself country strong. Uh, like carrying kegs around, flipping shit over my head. Perfect. So I needed a new challenge because I had never focused on aesthetic lifting, you know, working certain body parts. So I was like, how can I do that? How can I focus on that? I always need a very clear cut goal. I was like, I'm going to do a bodybuilding competition. The worst part of it, going into it, I knew would be the diet. Because I am from the South. I like to eat, okay? I like butter and fat and bread. Those are the staples of a Southern diet. Preparation when it comes to the meal prep is, is just the most important thing. <laughs> prepared for your day or have your meals ready before you go out you're gonna be fucked you have to have everything prepped ready to go and so just learning to kind of get in that regimen on Sundays and Wednesdays because I like to prep two times a week because I want my food to be kind of fresh so like Sundays and Wednesdays you prep just a whole bunch of stuff and get a food scale and at first I hated it I was like I can't do this it's gonna be terrible but once you start getting into it especially after about two weeks number one you see your body changing that's motivation right there and then number two I think that routine as monotonous as it may sound as boring as it may sound it's super important especially if you have goals sticking to a routine waking up at 5 a.m. because my ass is not going to work out after work I don't, a long work day I know myself so for me working out before work works out if I had to wake up at 5 a.m. to do so, guess what? That's what I'm doing. And it's the same thing every single day. And so for some people, that might sound like hell. To me, at first, it sounded like hell. But I've realized that a routine and just staying in your zone, staying in your lane, realizing what you need to do, that's what keeps you on track, and that's how you get your goals to, to achieve your goals. In middle school, stuff like that, I used to be super competitive I mean it was I remember I was the captain of my volleyball team in middle school and I would sit there and get in huddles with the girls and cuss them out <laughs> like looking back I was like whoa because with strongman everything is timed um, most of the things you're lifting for a time so how how many you know uh, over the head presses can you do in this amount of time and you're going against someone else so when I started doing that I realized, oh shit, no, I'm still competitive because I didn't even think I was that strong compared to this person. I thought this person was way stronger than me, but when that, when the booze timer went off, boom, it was like a, a second wind. And so I'm definitely extremely competitive. I don't like to lose because I think that God made me to be an athletic specimen and I can't let him down.